So David, fantastic idea to get Marjorie Wentworth as part of the 10th International Humanitarian Law Dialogues to write a poem specifically for Nuremberg. So uh, giving a, uh, a lecture at Chicago in July, uh, and uh, after my talk on Syria and the tragedy of, uh, of Syria itself and the atrocity, uh, people are coming up afterwards asking me questions, and uh, Marjorie Wentworth, the poet laureate of South Carolina, came up to me and uh, she had tears in her eyes, and she thanked me for uh, my talk and the sincerity of which I brought to that talk. And uh, I said, well, thank you much, and she gave me her card. I was there teaching poetry and doing a reading and doing a talk, and I saw that David was speaking um, one afternoon, and I recognized his name. I think it was right around when the Vanity Fair article came out about that. Mm -hmm. And I had recently written a book with um, uh, Juan Mendez, who's uh, a very well known in international human rights circles. He's actually the UN Special Rapporteur on the Prevention of Torture. So I went to the talk and it was fantastic. And he talked about the Jackson Center, which I thought was so interesting. And I kind of got the context for a lot of the work he was doing. And he talked about Sierra Leone and Rwanda. And I went up to him after and said, you know, I'm the poet who's here, whatever. And I gave him my card and said that I'd written this book with, with Juan Mendez. And he was thrilled because he was friends with him. And then he said, oh, South Carolina, I'm from North Carolina. And, you know, then he told me that um, when he was in Sierra Leone for, I want to say, two years, maybe even more, gathering evidence and, you know, just dealing with the horror of what happened there. At night, he would write poems to his wife. And we talked about that. And I said, well, that makes sense to me that you would do that. It, it just kind of helped balance you emotionally. And we had a little conversation about it. I thought it was really interesting. And uh, But I never heard from him again. Uh, of course, during this time frame, I'm already thinking about Nuremberg. This is well over a year out. But I realized that with the 10th anniversary coming up of the dialogues, that we need to do something special, plus the 70th anniversary of the, of the uh, uh, judgments. And so uh, about a month later, I picked up her car. Last March, uh, March 2016, he emailed me. And I guess he saved my car, a smart guy. And uh, something like, you know, I have an idea I want to talk to you about. And, um, you know, I knew immediately it was him. And I had just been on national television asking Hillary Clinton a question in a town hall kind of environment. And her answer went on for like 10 minutes. So it was sort of a big thing. And um, I think he saw that and it, it sort of clicked. So I was sort of the right person at the right time. And um, because I, you know, I work for, in the human rights field, I work for Amnesty, I work for, you know, in refugee resettlement for years. I mean, it's sort of my background in a little way. Um, so I was, you know, very familiar with um, Nuremberg and the International Criminal Court and understood that they were looking for something um, to, to sort of document what it means for the world now, um, especially with the um, dialogues juxtaposed to the 70th anniversary. So I knew it was something I would be interested in. I, and it's true that I'd always wanted to write about America. Like it always fascinated me. Um, so I was really honored to, for the opportunity. But I didn't start writing the poem until the 4th of July. Because I, you know, my mother passed away, and I had another book come out. It's about the, what happened in Charleston with the church shooting. So I was like on book tour, and it was crazy. And then 4th of July, when everybody was running around doing fun things, like, I've got to write this poem. And I read about six books and kind of really thought about um, all the different um, developments, not just the International Criminal Court, although that's the most important one, but also just, you know, uh, the Internet, the, the uh, Inter-American uh, Court in Latin America and, and all the different manifestations of, of international law that, that we wouldn't have without that um, And I, I I felt that, um, you know, it, it really needed to be a kind of uh, acknowledgement of that and, and, and a kind of universal message um, that reminded people that if we didn't have Nuremberg, 
Yeah, where would we be? Uh, Dave at home tonight uh, in the courtroom for the first time, a world premiere uh, of a marvelous poem uh, that captures the spirit of uh, the place. Good evening. I'm so grateful and honored to be here, and I want to thank David Michael Crane for inviting me. Um, my poem is called In the Shadows of Nuremberg, and it's dedicated to Henry Barbanel, who was a resistance fighter in Poland when he was 14, 15, and 16 years old, and I grew up with him. In the Shadows of Nuremberg. Because we are forever weak and wounded, looking for someone to follow or blame, sometimes we become savage and change the rules to ease our minds. Clouded by delusions of power or fame, human beings can justify anything. Too often things go wrong in a hurry and the masses go along as if their hearts were turned inside out and hatred was something long hidden but there like a riptide pulling below the glittering smooth surface of the sea. Abandoning everything we know is right, we become tribal and primitive, tearing the ties that bind us one to another as if they were made of air, and love dissolves into, the, into something lost in the cruel cacophony. And though it may be far, there's always a storm swirling somewhere. The sea that creates and connects us holds the seeds of our destruction. Still, God keeps nothing from us. Each new wave is a renewal, every day a gift of our own making. And as we stumble from the shadows of the 20th century, covered in blood and ash, cradling the bones of those who are lost, we know there can be justice. The pattern has been set. No matter how long it takes, there is no peace without redemption. Without shadows, there is no light. Thank you.